Okay, and we're back. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do a problem where an, we have a, we're going to use another if ladder, but I want to give you guys a timeline here. So last time I kind of gave you uh, the problem of where you have this 18 year um, cut off and you cannot vote here so no voting if you are younger but you can you can vote if you're older so let me go through the solution to that really quickly it's very easy so we would just go uh, age equals int and then go input bracket, uh, enter your age, and now, um, let's, that looks nicer. And then we would go if age is greater than 18, notice it, um, notice Genie automatically indents for me because it understands Python. And the reason it understands Python is because this file ends in .py. Do you notice it ends in .py? If you don't save it in .py, it's not going to be able to do that because it's not going to know that it's uh, a Python file. So now you could say you can vote. Okay? Um, Mr. R. Yeah. One, one thing I noticed when I was doing it um, is at first I also did um, gra um, greater than 18 you can vote, um, but like if you want to do the um, age greater than 120, um, it won't say you are a vampire because we're not there yet. Okay. We're not we're not at that one yet. We're gonna get to that soon. So here, uh, I'm gonna say else, and then I'm going to say. Uh, print, sorry, you can't vote. Sorry, you are too young. Okay? To vote. There. So now, um, we need an else here because we only want one of these two to be executed. Alright, so let's just say, let's just run this. And, uh-oh, uh, looks like I have an error. Aha! Now, notice, I want you to see this error again. Because this is something that's going to happen with you guys. And I did it too. It's a very common mistake. This error is on my if line. So it says line 3. But in fact, this error is not on line 3. It's on line 2. When Because I, I just know this error because it happens so often. So. If you look at line 3, there's nothing wrong with it. But what's wrong with line 2? Look. Notice that bracket turned red. If I go to this one, this one turns blue. This one means, when it goes red, it means there's no closing bracket. So if I put another one, haha, -ha, now it goes blue. That was what I was missing. I didn't have the close bracket. So F5 again. Now it says enter your age. So if I, if I enter 19, it says you can vote. Let me run it again just to make sure it's working. I'm testing it. Let's say I'm five. It says, sorry, you are too young to vote. Okay, perfect. All right, so this seems to be working. Um, now I have a different problem for you. In this question, uh, let's kind of move this one up a little bit. Uh-oh, where are we? Yeah. We're going to have the, another number line, but in this case, we're going to have this be one years old, this be 18 years old, and then this is 120 years old. So obviously, they could type in other ages. If you're less than one, you are not born. If you're 1 to 18, you're too young. If you're 18 to 120, uh, you can vote. 
But if you're older than 120, then you're a vampire. And therefore, you cannot vote. You can't vote if you're too young, and if you can't vote if you're not born. Only 18, so not 18, but like 19 to 119 is the age uh, gap that you're allowed to vote. So what I would like you to do to try and solve this problem is to use an if ladder that looks like this and then block of code and then elif test and then block of code and then elif test and however many elifs that you need and then finally the last one should be an else and your else does not require a test it just has uh, the else so when it, when you do this please think in order uh, of the ages so I will leave this graphic up for you and uh, go ahead and pause the video and uh, give it a shot okay do it now and we're back okay so now that you've had a chance to try it let's go see if we can actually code this so here's how you do it so I'm, I'm going to ask for their age again but this time I'm going to say not going to start with 18 and there's a reason for that because I want this to be logical I don't want to jump around in other words if I go back to the image here I don't want to jump around I don't want to start if I start here then I'm gonna to have to deal with with this area and then and then I'm gonna to have to go to this area and I, I don't want to jump around I want to do it linearly in other words if I'm gonna start here at not born then I want to travel this way if I start at a vampire then I'm gonna to want to travel that way okay so I tell you what let's start with um, let's start with a vampire okay let's start on this side here so let's go to our code and we would say if age is greater than 120 print you are a vampire by the way I'm just gonna mention here before you continue on if you don't pause the video and simply watch through it without trying this yourself you're actually robbing yourself of a learning opportunity so it's it's really imperative that you try these things and even if you fail that's totally fine but you have to try them before you look at the solution you can't learn how to ride a bicycle by watching others ride a bicycle you have to get on the bike and try it yourself if you fall that's okay don't be afraid of failing so here now I'm going to say uh, elif age now here is the cool part is I'm going to say if age is greater than 18 now do I need to say greater than 18 and age is less than 120 now here's the cool thing about doing this in in the order in which I'm doing it is this becomes unnecessary because here's why it's only going to get to line number five if line three was false that means if it's not greater than 120 it must be less than 120 so I don't have to put that and less than 120 on this line so I'll, all I have to do is that so in other words I'm not gonna get to the L if if line 3 was true you understand so now the only possibility here is if it's greater than 18 but also 
not greater than 120. So here I can say, you can vote. All right. Now comes the next elif. Elif age is greater than zero. Okay? Well, I know I wrote one on there, but if a person says one, then technically they're alive. If you say one, then you could be one years old. Not quite sure how a one year old would be able to use a computer, but that's not important. Uh, so we'd say, if age is greater than zero, print, you are too young. Well, actually, uh, I've already got this, so why don't we just go like this. There. Okay. Now, you might think, ah, what's the next LF? Age is, should I say, less than zero? Here's the interesting thing. If you want to be efficient, I guess I could do that, but also then, what about zero? But here's the awesome part. Look, let's go back here. Let's look at this uh, age timeline. So the first one dealt with this area, okay? The second one dealt with this part. The third one dealt with this part. What's left? This area here, the not born one, is the only one that's left. So just through simple deductive logic, if it's not a vampire, it's not, you're not in this region, and you're not too young, then the only one left possible is too young, or not, sorry, is not born. Therefore, if we go back to our code, we don't actually need another elif here. All we need is an else. We don't even need to check the age in this situation because there is no other possibility. So we could say, aha, else, you are not born. And that's it. So now, if we run this, F5, let's try it. Enter your age, 121. You are a vampire. Excellent. F5. Enter your age, uh, 19. You can vote. Excellent. Notice it doesn't say anything else other than what it's supposed to. Only one section of this is of this if ladder is printing. Only one of them gets printed. All the rest gets skipped. Okay, let's run it again. F5. Uh, we did 19. Okay, let's try. Let's try one years old. Sorry, you're too young. Okay, let's just double check this one again. Let's try 17. Excellent. Sorry, you're too young. Perfect. All right, now let's try something ridiculous like negative one. You are not born. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay? So now I, I'm going to give you guys another problem to try. Okay? Now, this, these questions all relate to um, how old you are. However, what if, I, what if we were to ask another question so that does not pertain to age? Rather, it's a question that says, are you a citizen? Are you a, a citizen of the country? Right? So, if you're not a citizen of the country, then it doesn't matter how old you are, you cannot vote. So I'd like you to think about this now, and I'm going to give you a hint. You should ask the question, are you a citizen, before on line one, okay? 
So I could say uh, citizen equals input are you a citizen question mark so now now listen what are they gonna reply right so let's give them a little bit of instruction here so let's let's tell them yes or no because they're not gonna I mean what could they say they could type in yeah sure uh-huh so in this case Yes, the Y is for yes, the N is for no. So that's the variable sit, C-I-T, for citizen. Are they a citizen or, yet or not? Now I want you to think about how you would modify this code to do the right thing. And I'll pause the video here and then um, I'll give you guys time to write the rest of the code, okay? Try it. All right, welcome back. Here is the solution to if you are a citizen. Hope you tried it once again. Uh, there's no value in learning if you don't actually try before watching the solution. Um, what we're gonna do here is I'm going to show you what's called nested if statements. What that means is that you can have an if statement inside of an if statement. So what we'll do is we'll go up to the top here and I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm gonna say if, now just, just a recall little thing, what type of data does input return? A string so that that that's just sit is going to be a string so I'll say if sit equals yes if that's true now watch what I'm gonna do this is gonna blow you away I'm gonna come to the beginning here I'm gonna select everything that I have typed previously and then I'm gonna hit the tab key how cool is that? That's the power of Genie. Now, notice that I'm only going to ask the question, enter your age, if they are a citizen. I'm, o I'm not going to do any of this from lines 3 to, tw to, to like 11. None of that's going to happen if they're not a citizen. And guess what? If they're not a citizen, I'll simply go, because it's only a binary, right? They're either a citizen or not. There's only two possibilities. So if yes, there you go. And and then I don't have to check if it's not, because there's a, that's the only other possibility. I'll say print, sorry, only citizens can vote. And so now I have, as you can clearly see, what's called a nested if statement. So this if contains all this code, which, which, is, which in turn has an if statement in it here. But notice this if block is connected with this else statement, right? So that's why indentation matters so much in Python. And it's clear when you look at it, okay? Uh, once again, I hope you're, notice these are spaces. We, we did this before, but we set our um, preferences in Genie to do spaces. So if you go up here and you go down to preferences and you go to uh, editor, indentation, notice I have four spaces set. That's what you should have. Okay, so let's run this, F5. Are you a citizen? No. Oh, it doesn't ask me my age. Okay, perfect, sorry, only citizens can vote. Okay, let's try it again, F5. Are you a citizen? Yes. Ah, now it asks me for my age, okay? And it says I'm a vampire. All right, well, it's pretty smart. 
Okay, so you guys have, hopefully, you guys uh, learned something today from this. There is one other tiny little tidbit, golden nugget, I'm going to show you now, and that is, uh, what if the person who's running the program is kind of dumb and they do that? And then you're like, well, wait a minute, I typed in yes, I am a citizen. Now it's telling me I can't vote. What's wrong with this program? Come on, man, I'm complaining. Well, look, notice I typed in a capital Y, right? So they didn't follow my instructions here clearly because I said lowercase y or n, but that's okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change my citizen into a lowercase here by going sit dot lower. Sit is a string and dot lower works on strings. So that may be the first time you've seen the dot notation. So that means that the, the, dot, the lower function will work on strings. And ask yourself, is sit a string? It is, so lower will work on it. To show you this in the interpreter, uh, this might help you, is there's an example of it. So I've already done it here. So if I say y dot upper, it goes to capital. y dot lower goes to lowercase. So in this case, if I was to run this and I typed in capital, then it works as expected. Okay? All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you learned something. Uh, I have, um, oh, I have one other assignment for you guys before I let you go. Uh, I want you guys to try, we'll, pick, we'll do the solution to this one next time, but I want you guys to try a uh, program which asks the user what month they are. So we've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And if they are, let's see, June, July, August is summer. Could, would you mind closing the door for me? Thanks. And um, let's see, uh, March, April, May is spring, and then September, October, November is fall, and then this one's kind of spans all of them, right? So I would say December, January, and February is uh, winter, which includes which includes um, December. So what I'd like you to do is ask the user what month is it, and then depending on what month they tell you, okay, now how do you determine what month? Perhaps we might have to have a three-letter code, okay? So Jan Feb, uh, like that, okay? And then whatever month they tell you, then you reply by telling them what season they're in. So you have to figure out if it's winter, spring, summer, fall, and tell them the, cor the correct season that they're living in. All right? Give it a shot, and we'll go over the solution next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.